Begin by sketching out vase forms in your sketchbook that would be difficult to throw in one, in one piece because of their rapid changes of direction or the bulbous base. We will be throwing sections that are attached in a leather hard state. We're shooting for vases that are a minimum of 12 inches tall and a maximum of 44 so that they fit in the kiln. This is also going to be great practice using calipers to measure the edges of the clay where it comes together and collaring or throwing the clay inward. Two skills that are necessary in making lidded jars and teapots. And what I have here is I've started the base. I would recommend using between two and three pounds of clay. And I have my cylinder opened to a nice flat bottom. It's a quarter inch thick and about two inches across. And you can think of any shape starting from a cylinder. And make sure that you don't leave any excess clay in the base of the cylinder. We're not going to be removing this base section from the wheel to trim, we're going to be finishing it right side up. And as I start to shape this cylinder and I'm pulling it back in towards the center, be sure not to over pull the top rim. Leave a little extra thickness. That thickness will come in handy when you're attaching the next section. On my last pull, when my wall is approaching a quarter inch thickness, I'm doing some pre-shaping. I'm allowing my hands to take turns. I'm pushing out, pushing in, bringing it back in towards the center. This is something that's good to practice because again, the next thing we're going to be doing is lidded jars and teapots. Taking a moment to rib the outside and the inside. Just add a little bit more volume as I'm removing my throwing marks. Now I can be a little more adventurous as I'm throwing this bottom section, I can really thin out the side walls because I'm not worried about it supporting the weight of the top of the vase because again, we're attaching the sections in a leather hard state. Undercutting it with my wooden knife to remove the excess clay and chew it up to round. and giving it an indent with the side of my finger to stop the flow of glaze. Make sure that you leave this top edge controlled. You want a nice broad surface to attach the next section. And also, we are not removing this from the bat. We're leaving it attached until it dries to the leather hard state and that will make attaching the sections very easy. The last thing that I'm going to do is to measure the outside edge of the top rim. Now, as soon as the clay starts to dry, it starts to shrink. So make sure that you write this measurement down in your sketchbook. ready to throw the upper section now. Remember the minimum is 12 inches, so however many sections it takes you to get to 12 inches, two, three, four, whatever it takes. And the maximum in our case is 44 inches. So. These upper sections, I can open it straight to the wheel head. So I don't have to worry about it having a bottom at all. It doesn't need one. and I'm centering it to a tall, narrow shape.
And again, just drilling straight down to the wheel head. And you should find that this little two pound chunk of clay goes quite a bit farther because you don't have a bottom. Coloring it in. And now just throwing it like a cylinder. Again, wetting the wall before each pool, making a small notch at the bottom. As I start to approach a quarter inch wall thickness, I'm letting my hands take turns on this last pull, letting my inside hand push out a little bit. One thing I do want to check with my calipers is to see if I need to make any adjustments. I'm going to check the exterior diameter of my the bottom of this cylinder, and I see that I'm pretty close. I want to actually come out just a little bit, so I'm going to just press out from the inside. And you'll find that this cylinder is pretty easy to manipulate its diameter, especially because it has no bottom. One final pull. Now if I want the top of my vase to be really, really collared in, it's too small to get my hand inside, I want to be sure to finish the bottom section of the vase first. So I'm going to take a moment to rib it on the exterior and interior because once I collar it in, I will no longer be able to get my hand down inside of it. So I really want to make sure that I've considered the shape and the finish before that point. And it also makes it stronger to remove the excess moisture. Okay, when I'm happy with this bottom shape, I can proceed with collaring in the top section. So I wet it and I'm just coupling my hands inward. And any time that you really aggressively collar this in, you'll see the clay kind of buckles a little bit. You're going to have to do one more pull. So I'm doing a pull just with my fingertips here. And that's going to even the wall out again. And we'll get some extra height out of that as well.